So we finally got access to uh, Tesla's full self-driving. And it's no longer beta. They don't call it beta anymore. They call it supervised full self-driving, which means they're starting to get pretty confident. I've been playing around with it for the past week, and now we're actually going to put it to the test on a actual real mini road trip. A lot of the YouTubers you see putting it to the test usually find the most difficult situations to put it through, but I'm more interested in finding out what it can do in the context of what I like to do, which is go on adventuring. And with the Model 3, obviously that's road trips and getting me to and from camping destinations and trailheads and stuff like that. So we're just at the uh, Tesla superchargers here, finishing charging up to 100%. It's an LFP Model 3, so we can. And then we have a 118 kilometer drive to get to where we're going. And the goal is to use Tesla's full self driving the entire way and see if it can get us all the way there without any interventions or disengagements whatsoever. Now, the chances of that, very slim. Probably I'll have to take over at some point, but we'll, we'll see. All right, so. We have FSD. Now turn right onto Pickering Parkway. All right, we have FSD enabled. Uh, we're in chill mode, because I'm actually a very conservative driver. So, all right, FSD is going. And one very common complaint that I wholeheartedly agree with is that one complaint that I wholeheartedly agree with. Can I talk? Jesus. One complaint that I wholeheartedly agree with is that FSD is very aggressive with the acceleration. So, yeah, I'll come to a stop. So we're in Ajax, just on the east side of Toronto, and we're driving basically through Toronto all the way around Lake Ontario to Hamilton, which is in 118 kilometers. And although the goal is to get there without uh, full self-driving disengaging at all, we'll at least see how many disengagements it takes to uh, get us that far. Okay, go. Go, bud. All right, so that's an intervention. I have to hit the accelerator because it decided to be uh, super slow on the on-ramp for some reason. So interventions are fine. But I'm, I'm hoping I can get through this drive without having to actually take over. All right, you really need to go. We're on the highway. Come on, go, go, go. You can't crank it up any higher because it thinks the speed limit is 60. Mm -hmm. There, now it finally picked up that we're on the highway. So we are on the 401, one of the busiest and largest highways in the world. So now we're getting into what the 401 is known for, <laughs> traffic. Usually in and around this area anyways, yeah. about, about around Kennedy. Ooh. She helps it real quick. Yeah, it was a pretty hard break, but the uh, car ahead of us did a pretty hard break too. And honestly, FSD handles that situation a heck of a lot better than regular autopilot does. Uh, autopilot probably wouldn't have been able to brake in time. I would have had to intervene. Yeah, it usually brakes a lot slower. Yeah. So, I haven't seen too much of how FSD handles highway uh, on any of the videos I watch. Uh, so far, uh, it seems like it handles the actual driving just fine. The only complaint I've had with it so far is uh, really dumb lane selection sometimes when it's trying to uh, uh, take its off-ramp. So if we see any problems in the highway section, that's where I'm expecting it. Well, that was uh, my fault. So technically that's a disengagement. That was just uh, a knee-jerk reaction for me to tap in the brake. I didn't actually need to take over there. So we won't count that one. It's definitely an interesting time that uh, full self-driving is uh, coming into uh, 
its own here because uh, ever since uh, the virus that shall not be named, uh, drivers have gotten so, so much worse. They do some really, really stupid stuff, and I've had quite a few close calls in this car by no fault of my own. So I actually feel better having full self-driving at the helm because it has instant reaction when it detects lane intrusion compared to a human's uh, you know, 20, 30 millisecond response time. Interesting. It, it, the car didn't accelerate because I think it saw his turn signal trying to get over. So that was really interesting. Uh, I've seen increasing proof that full self-driving actually does pay attention to turn signals on cars that it's going to pass. So it's not the first time I've seen that it hesitated and waited for a car that had its turn signal on to merge into our lane. so that guy can get in. All right, so we'll count that as a uh, disengagement. pretty good so far that I've seen about picking the right size space to uh, merge in when it needs to merge. Oh, that's why traffic's so bad. I can see some uh, uh, fire truck lights. Yeah, uh, someone got into an accident. As soon as an accident happens on this highway, man, it just causes complete backup like this. Yeah, just utter chaos. This is, uh, this is the reality of uh, using full self-driving in a normal driving scenario. You know, when you see people testing it out online, they're always like finding the most extreme situations to torture test it, to see what it's capable of in like the most uh, crazy circumstances. But in real life, most people are just doing normal drives, like a trip down to the mall uh, in a couple cities over, like what we're doing. And so you see, the full self-driving screwing up a lot more in these torture tests than what it actually does in a real life driving situation, right? So, so far in the uh, 40, 40 ish kilometers that we've done, uh, we've only had one disengagement and that really probably didn't need to happen. I was just getting a little concerned with how close the car was getting to the truck that was uh, merging into our lane. So. Other than that, it's been roughly smooth sailing. second it wanted to change lanes and then it aborted that lane change like a split second after. And then we've got this Dodge here who seems intent on intruding into our lane. He's hovering very close to the left so the car has been very cautious of him. It's been staying uh, away from being directly beside him because it was seeing what he was doing. The car is very attentive.
could be, but it was saying that the max speed on the road is 100 kilometers an hour, but the max speed that the car was set to was 70. So that's a 30 kilometer undercut for what the In road two speed kilometers, is. Keep left to stay on Queen Elizabeth Way toward Regional Road 19, Winston Churchill Boulevard. Yeah, I don't know. Have any of you guys who use full self driving seen that before where the max road speed is uh, what it's supposed to be, but the car decides that the maximum speed that it's allowed to go is 30 kilometers under what the actual road speed is set to? left to get to our destination. So, so far we've only had the one disengagement. Uh, yeah, In two kilometers, interest. take exit 89 on the right toward Meadow Valley Parkway. Yeah. So that was interesting. The car decided it wanted to get over, uh, then started moving over, and then this red uh, Honda started intruding into our lane, so it abandoned. Then it started trying again, but then uh, this black pickup truck just came up from behind us and just like ripped around uh, into the lane that we were gonna take and the car abandoned it again. So it's it's got 360 degree vision. Like it's looking all around it and seeing all this stuff that's going down. So kudos to it, it handled that very well. Finally, ready to get off of the highway, and this is where things actually start to get interesting. Is uh, when full self-driving has to tackle the, uh, the city streets. So we're lucky in that the highway took us 95, 97 percent of the way there, which is actually pretty straightforward driving. But now the car actually has to uh, uh, get off and take now the city take streets. The upper Wentworth Street exit on the right. Yeah, it's literally right off the highway. Mm -hmm. Turn right onto Upper Wentworth Street. So yeah, it's like 99% highway driving. I need to use the turn, turn right onto Upper Wentworth Street. Yeah, to our right here is the mall we're going to. So it's just got to uh, make this right-hand turn off of the uh, off ramp, and then into the parking lot, and we'll consider that basically the end of our little adventure here. Superchargers from here too. Yeah. In 200 meters, turn right onto Lime Ridge Mall. Then your destination will be on the right. Let's see the thing. Got the advanced green to turn right, so let's see if the car. Oh, now never mind. turn right onto Lime Ridge Mall. Oh. It sees the people crossing, so it's not going, creeping, waiting. All right, now it's going. Now your destination is on the right. 
Now turn right to stay on Lime Ridge Mall. Mall. I'm like a true New Yorker. Mall. All right, let's see if I can get over there. I'm In 200 go meters, yeah. turn right to stay on Lime Ridge Mall. Mall. So we're in like one of those roads that are on the inside of the mall property. You know, what are you doing? You're like straddling the line here. It's going to go over here. You don't want it to go over there. Okay. Well, we're basically where we want to be anyway, so we'll call it there. Nice. So yeah, uh, we uh, parked in a spot. Uh, so we had one disengagement and even that one i'm not a hundred percent sure that i actually had to disengage there i was just getting a little bit too close to that truck that was trying to merge into our lane and it felt like the car was already slowing down for him so i actually think i could have not disengaged there so by the skin of its teeth i think on this drive the car could have actually gotten here without anybody in the driver's seat and two interventions to just pick up the pace on, on the on-ramp, and I forget what the other one was. Oh, uh, we had to adjust the speed. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was a 118 kilometers, fully autonomous.